put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Stock and two smoking barrels, movie thoughts. I think one of the best things about this are just the these situations where basically the audience is the only one who is seeing what's really going on. You know, it's just it's a bunch of mix-ups, you know, and just situations where, you know, for a while it seems more or less straightforward, you know. You've got the neighbors robbing the pot growers and then, you know, our, you know, main four criminals are going to rob the neighbors so that they have the money to pay back Hatchet Harry in time and you know, as well as a bunch of money to, you know, retire with, basically. And after that, it gets really, you know, it, it gets a bit confused, you know, and I don't mean that in a negative way, but it just, you know, you have these different people robbing each other and not not fully realizing what's going on. But before I talk about that, I do love the robbing of the, you know, what's it called? The pot growers, you know, because for a couple of scenes, it, in fact, just the pot growers themselves, just hilarious. You know, you've got, just for a couple of scenes, you've got the thing of, you know, use the cage. That's what it's there for, you know, and you, you even have the, you know, the guy ask Plank, the neighbor guy, they got a cage, well, you know, why don't they use it? Yeah. So it's just brilliant because it is that sort of common every man's logic, you know. Well, if, if you've got this security measure, obviously you're going to want to use it, so why aren't you using it, you know, kind of just... And then you have these... But, but yeah, so the... You know, you spend a couple of scenes uh, on that, and then you have the thing of, you know, Okay, so, I sent you out hours ago to buy a money counter. You come back with a barely conscious Gloria and a bag of fertilizer. But we need fertilizer. I know we need fertilizer. We also need a money counter. I will not sit there and count those money by myself. And you're carrying around this huge bag of fertilizer with a stone girl by your side. You know, could you be a little more in You know, it's just... And, you know, later, what are they doing? They're sitting there counting the bills. And who's doing it? Everyone but the guy who said that he wouldn't. You know, just excellent. You know, because there's this little touch where if you're, if you're not really paying attention, you're going to miss it. You know, they don't make a huge effort to draw attention to it. It's just a little detail in the scene. And as that's you know, some of the best humor when it's just completely you know, very subtle, is, is great. But yeah, and then, you know, the neighbors, the thieves show up, and the cage is locked. You know, that's brilliant. And the stoner walks down there to Plank, and Plank is like, okay, just open this cage or I'll shoot you. And the guy faints, because he is not used to this kind of pressure. He's just, he's a pothead, what do you expect? And, you know, he, Plank has the keys, and then the other guy shoves him, and he like drops the keys, and he has to get the keys back with the bun, the, the gun butt, and he's like trying to unlock the, and and that's really that's also some of the really good stuff in this movie when people are just bickering, you know, just mindlessly bickering because they can't figure out who should be in charge and who's doing what, you know. You've got the scene with the keys where they can't figure out who should try to unlock the, you know, the gate. And you've got, and, and that's also the thing, you know, you have this scene where they talk about, well, there is this cage. Yeah, but they don't use it. Why would they have a cage if they don't use it? And then, you know, they just kind of figure, well, okay, we don't need to worry about the cage. But then they get there, the cage is locked, you know. And it's, it's just, it's again this kind of sort of common everyman's logic where, well, 
you know, if there's a cage, it might be locked. But it's just they're talking about, ah, eh, you know, they don't lock it, so you know, it. It's just it's it's a very human trait, you know, to just say, well, they never lock it anyway, so we could, you know, we shouldn't worry about that, you know. And but but yeah, so you have that scene of bickering at the very end, you know, with the cell phone, it's like, who should call them, you know, what's the number, and no, 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 only one of us should call them, or you're gonna block the line, and all this stuff, you know, and then suddenly Statham is calling, you know, all that stuff. But yeah, so you have them, in the, and they get through, and then, you know, get the rifle, you know, and you're thinking, oh, bad stuff's gonna go down, and then, oh, oh he shot me, ah, he shot me. It's an air rifle, that's just, I didn't see that coming, you know. What pot growers were not mercenaries? You, th you shot him in the throat. What did you shoot? And and he survived. What did you shoot him with? An air rifle? Oh, <laughs> well, that would have been silly. You know, just love his face when he's confronted with that little bit of you know. Again, every man's logic. And yeah, so that you know, they get up into the room, and you've got the the stem gun, you know, and he fires the the, the shotgun, and it's like, ah, well, there's a lot of smoke here. We're in this tight and closed space, you know. I can't see a thing, and he fires the stem gun, and it's just ridiculous. And the you know, they get up there, and what's his name, Willie, has gone out, and he's got the machete, you know, and he charges at the guy with the stem gun, you know, and and then you've got Gloria. Who we've already seen, you know, like a, f a scene or two ago, maybe a couple of scenes ago, we saw that she could look just dead, stoned out of her mind, and then suddenly, boo! You know, so she's lying there, dead, stoned out of her mind. They're not even thinking about her because she looks stoned out of her mind. And she just gets up and gets the machine gun and just fires every. It's just. And that's the part that really, you know, that reminds me of. Sherlock Holmes, A Game of Shadows, you know, it's, you know, that, A Game of Shadows has him doing that, Guy Rich doing that on a, you know, bigger budget, larger scale, you know, so, yeah, just firing, and just, nothing, she hits nothing, you know, brilliant, you know, again, you just, it's just, it's this sort of, well, she's a stoner, she's, you know, we're not mercenaries, <laughs> But yeah, and so they get the loot, and they go, you know, get back, and then immediately the the other guys are there, you know. I was a little surprised that nothing was really going to come of him having forgotten the rifles, you know. For I, I sort of thought that maybe he would not get back in time or something, you know. But yeah, so and they're there, and and the you know the neighbor guy, he actually promises, I will find you and I'll get the money back, you know, and. Yeah, he finds them, and, and this sort of thing of, you know, find out if this place is bugged, you know, and and he literally says, you wouldn't find these guys even if they were your neighbors, you know, you wouldn't know, it just knocks him through the wall, and he's like, there are microphones here, you know, it's just brilliant, absolutely brilliant, and then they're counting up the money at the top of the, you know, on, on the first floor kind of thing, and they're waiting for the four to come back. But the four, they're like, we're scot free, we gotta go party, you know? And I love how every time it cuts back to their car, they're telling one line of a filthy joke. And we never hear the rest of the line. We never hear any of the rest of these jokes. They're like four jokes that I'm now trying to figure out in my head. What the crap? Where did that go? What was the. You know, but yeah. So anyway. You have, you know, the the black guys with the, you know, the Samoans, the, the, you know, the guy with the afro, you know, everyone just, you know, getting their guns ready. I love the, the, you know, the huge black guy who's just, you know, very gradually sort of, you know, you, you only very gradually see more and more of him, sort of. That was also something I wanted to say about the, the, the Samoan guy with the afro, you know. The first time you see him and he's just like, you know, the, the bartender's like, okay, you, you can tell him to change the channel or turn, you know, turn it down at your own risk, you know. And, and he goes over and he's just nothing happens. And you're like, oh, okay. And then later you find out he could have messed them up, you know. 
he was responsible for that guy running out of the bar of flame. And I love that the first time you see that, you don't understand what that is, and the four just do not react at all. Not even a... What was that? Just nothing. You know, they just... Okay, well, we're going. You know, all well, three at that point. You know, and... Later, you do find out what that actually was, you know, and again, I don't think it's actually the four who find out what was happening there, you know, and all the stuff with Nick the Greek who, you know, well, I got these two rifles that need to sell and then, oh, you need to get them back because those were the two rifles we wanted and we needed, you know, but, but yeah, so the, you know, the, the black gang goes into the you know, the apartment, and Plank is like, oh, this, this is bad, and he just shoots, and everyone shoots each other. You know, and I gotta love how the pot grower gets away with this one, you know, with all, all the weed, because the gang leader is just, he insists on turning the guy over before he shoots him in the face, and the guy's got the shotgun, and both of them die, you know, just brilliant. And you've got the... You know, but but yeah, the the rifles changing hands back and forth so many times, you know, and then the neighbor guy is fleeing from, you know, the scene of all the bodies, and Big Chris gets a hold of the rifles and the money, and he's like, oh, no, excuse me, I'm taking that. And I guess he didn't know that the neighbor guy wasn't one of them, and he did come out of the same apartment, you know, and presumably the first floor thing, I think that was still the place of the... the was it Eddie? I don't remember who exactly lived there, but one of the four. You know, and so he's driving back, and then suddenly, you know, the neighbor guy is there again, you know, threatening his kid, and Big Chris slams the car right into the car of the four, and, you know, smacks the, you know, car door, same as, you know, he didn't. It's Snatch. I guess Guy Ritchie fell in love with the, uh, the image of Vinnie Jones smacking someone's head in a car door. And, yeah, he's just, he goes into the, you know, he grabs the money from them. And then he goes into the, you know, Her Hatchet Harry's place because, you know, he's, you know, giving back the money. And then Tom's there with the two rifles, you know. And I, and I love how the narration kicks in there just briefly, and just describing that, you know, well, Big Chris knew that the rifles might be loaded, while Tom had to realize that the rifles were, of course, not loaded. And so for both of them to save face, you know, they just backed out, you know, a door each. Everyone else got arrested. You know, it's just this. And the, just the, the, the two incompetent thieves, just gotta love it with how, you know... I guess it's, part of it is that he does, you know, the the Baptist does hire really stupid people. You know, because if he didn't, it might have worked out fine with the rifles. But no, they, you know, they mess up and sell off the two only rifles that they were not allowed to sell off. You know, and suddenly Nick, Nick the Greek's in trouble, of course, for that. I love how Nick the Greek also messes up with the glass table. You know, the first time he places the glass on it, it smashes. The next time, the glass hasn't been replaced. It's just a day later, so he just tries to put, and, you know, glass falls down on the ground, and just the, the face of the, the Afro guy, you know, it's priceless. And, is, yeah, so you have the, what's it called, the, the two incompetent thieves, you know, and, they, and just how they, you know, they go in there and they're like, you know, one of them's like tickling the feet of the two the old people, you know, ah, oh, where's all your money? They don't have any money, can't you see? They can't even afford to buy new furniture. <laughs> because it's antiques, you moron. And, you know, the butler comes in and fires the shotguns at them and blows the $120 haircut, oh, pound haircut, you know, is brilliant. And, you know, is, is his hair supposed to look like that? But, and, and, yeah, so the, you know, they get the rifles and, you know, and, and they see that Big Chris has them. And then they're arguing over, well, who goes, it's Vinnie Jones, dude, dude's huge. He looks, you know, no, I, 
you do it, no, you do it. And eventually they just follow him in the car. And they're like, well, he went in there, so the rifle's got to be in there. He, he came back without the rifles. Okay, we got to go in there. And they move right past where it says the, the name of Harry the Hatchet, you know. And they go all the way in, and they go in guns drawn, of course, because there's rifles in there, so they need to protect themselves. And he just turns around the corner, aiming right at Harry, who's, of course, got the shotguns, and he's just loaded them. And, well... Or, the, or whatever, they were loaded, you know, and he's like, ah, oh, crap. You know, because the moment he sees Harry, he's like, well, that's Harry the Hatchet. I didn't need to go in there at all. And Harry, Harry doesn't even know that that's the guy who stole the rifles. He's just seeing a guy with two guns pointing at him, you know, what the... So, he shoots, and the guy shoots back, and just... And the other incompetent thief gets the, the guns and runs in there, guns blazing, you know, John Woo style. Back just tomahawks him in the back. What? Where did that come from? Has he been sitting there with that the entire time? You know, did he keep that inside his jacket, like, soap with the knives and, and the machete? What the... How long had he been walking around with machete inside his... Insane, you know? And he's like, ah, oh, knives are for pros. You know, you need to use knives, you know? And they're just like, we don't need to know any more about this, okay? So just keep it to yourself. And just... And, and he shoots at Harry, and then Tom goes in there, and it's like, well, we never saw Harry die. We didn't even see him get hit. And you know, we just saw a lot of, you know, bullets go his way. And so he goes in there and looks over, okay, he's dead, and he gets the rifles, you know, and he's just checking out the rifles, you know, he doesn't bother to load them, and so when Big Chris go, gets in there, you know, so, so anyway, and then you have Big Chris, you know, return the bag, because, well, you know, obviously you guys know your stuff, so, you know, I'm kind of, you know, you know well, that's, you know, what it seems like it's going to be, and then... You know, obviously, he's kept all the money for himself and bought the, the car, and now he and little Chris are set, you know. And they've just had Tom go and get rid of the rifles because, you know, they're, you know, they're 700 pounds. That, I couldn't just get rid of them, but, but they're incriminating, you know, you need to get rid of them. And I love how he, he sort of gets up as just, uh, Tom... Now, you know, and, and the bit before that, so you got rid of the rifles, you know, right? Oh, I wanted to talk about that with you. I actually didn't get rid of the rifles, you know, just this, yeah, just the way he says it. And then he drives, you know, and they tell, you need to drive those rifles out to a river, drop them in there, you know, jump in after yourself, you know. And he goes out there, and he just leans over because the rifles didn't go all the way into the water and he's got the cell phone in his mouth they actually managed to dial him on the phone and then it just ends with him hanging there you know do i answer the phone do I, what do i do you know that's brilliant you know because they find out that they're worth like what was it 250 to 300 grand you know just and i think that actually covers pretty much the entire movie right there but, yeah, if you can't tell, I friggin' loved it. It's just brilliant, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I actually have anything left to say, so... Yeah, in case you wanted the movie summarized, there you go. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.